I have lots of, lots of thoughts on the transition that the United States and other advanced developed countries are experiencing from, a post, from an industrial to a post-industrial society. And that's the real story. The real story here in the United States is that we had manufacturing as the economic driver for the first seven decades of the 20th century. We moved workers off the farms and onto the factory floor. And we ended up with a workforce in manufacturing, roughly about 30% of our workers in 1970. But since then, that's been declining dramatically. Now it's only 11%. And the consequence of that is that high school graduates have basically nothing to do in this economy anymore. And that's a huge problem because there's lots of high school graduates who are hoping to build their lives around high quality, high paying jobs in manufacturing. That's behind us. Now, now wealth is being created in the post-industrial intellectual service sectors, which are finance. <coughs> and uh, here, here in uh, Los Angeles, we have Hollywood, a very important source of wealth. There's the creative aspect of the Silicon Valley. We're, we're really an intellectual, creative-based economy, where before we were a building, manufacturing-based economy. And the problem with the creative, talent-based economy is that it's a highly unequal economy. There are very few people who do extremely well, and <clears throat> most people are struggling to get by. And that's the problem, that's the basic problem that I see in the 21st century. I, I see a lot of economic growth ahead. The internet has increased the speed of communication, which is a central driver, the essential determinant of the speed at which progress occurs, and that's really good. <clears throat> the global brain has added, in effect, about <clears throat> several billion people who are so trying to solve the problems of the world too. The Chinese and the Indians and the Indonesians and Russians, et cetera, et cetera, who are all not part of the global brain for way too long. They were in isolationist, inward-looking countries so they couldn't communicate with us. That's all behind us. So I feel very, very optimistic about economic growth globally, especially here in the United States in the 21st century. I think it's going to be the kind of growth that we haven't seen before in terms of speed of growth, but it's also going to be an uncomfortable, unequal kind of growth with a few people who have the talent, who do the hard work, like the stars in Hollywood, they'll be doing extremely well. But many Americans are going to be left behind by, by a system uh, that doesn't have much need for the services that they have to offer. And that's very uncomfortable and it's going to cause political problems here in the United States. And it causes uh, a lot of personal unhappiness, unhappiness and a lot of uh, uh, social uh, unrest or, or disruptions, and we need to solve that problem. Here in the state of California, we, uh, there's almost an emergency in the sense that we have almost half of our population Hispanic, whose educational attainments are not nearly adequate for the 21st century, and we're going to be ending up in California having an elderly, aged, retired, white population crowded up against the coast, and the workers are going to be the Hispanics on the interior whose educational levels are not adequate to really justify high-paid, high-quality jobs in post-industrial age. So from the standpoint of what California needs to do, we need to invest in that Hispanic community and get that educational attainment much higher. Otherwise, we're going to have a really problematic situation here in California, a situation that's going to be politically extremely hot because there's going to be a lot of Latino politicians and a lot of Latino voters who, whose economic outcomes are not going to be all that good. And there's, inevitably, there's going to be a, uh, a redistributive political system and, and, a, and a very uncomfortable one that, that's class-based. So <clears throat> the reality of the post-industrial age, it comes with more inequality. We need to prepare for those drivers now, prepare for those changes, not wait until it's too late. And that means education. It means a different kind of education. It means the kind of education that releases the creativity, the special features that are in each of us, not the kind of education that was suited to industrial age. In industrial age, the most important thing you had to learn in high school was to get to school on time and do what the teacher told you to do. And if you learned that well enough, you were a great worker in a manufacturing society. That's not true for a post-industrial creative economy. You don't want people who get to work on time and do what the bosses tell them to do. You want to unleash the creativity that is in each of us. So we need a lot more education. We need a different kind of education. Otherwise, we're going to have very difficult political problems in the next two or three decades here in the state of California.